Okay, and the first of the guests are already with us. Sonal Verma, the Managing Director and Chief Economist, uh, India and Asia X Japan at Nomura Financial Advisory and Securities, and Jahangir Aziz, Head Emerging Market Economics Research and Commodities at JP Morgan. Uh, Sonal and Jahangir, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, Jahangir, let me come to you. You have stayed up for us, so thank you for that. Uh, what should be the big numbers that you will watch out for? Which is, you know, one, two, three, that uh, they should get it right. You've already started with one, right? Uh, you started with the nominal GDP, yep. right? And that is key to figuring out what is going to be the basis on which we will make a judgment on the tax uh, numbers that they will have. Uh, you talked about 10. We probably have a tad lower around nine. Oh. Uh, so that's clearly the big number that we were looking, looking for. And obviously, the size of the fiscal deficit reduction. Uh, we are looking at a half a percentage point to 5.9%. Uh, um, and that is going to be key in figuring out whether or not India will be able to maintain macroeconomic stability uh, throughout, you know, the first year 24, uh, because that essentially is going to drive what is going to happen to India's current account deficit. And clearly, current account deficit, even the CEA talked about it in the economic survey, is one of the key concerns as we go through in uh, fiscal year 24. No, Jangir, see, uh, whether, whether we take a 9% or an 11% would mean whether you're taking the GDP at 303 trillion or at uh, 300 trillion. No. So when it comes to 5.8% no. of the fiscal deficit or 5.9% of the, of the GDP, the difference will be 17.5 trillion or 17.7 .7 trillion. Is it such a big deal? No, that's so. That's not the big deal. The big deal is that what on the basis of that, how much is the tax mm. gross tax revenues that the government actually puts into the budget? Okay. Remember, over the last two years, um, this team in North Block has systematically underestimated uh, tax collection, and that has clearly been one of the reasons why India has managed to overconsolidate over the last two years. Uh, but they had been supported by a very strong nominal GDP growth yeah. uh, this year in particular. But if you start with a base of around 9 or 10%, right, mm. you don't really have that much leeway anymore mm. uh, in order for you to understate the tax collection and then over-deliver towards yeah. the end of the that's year. Right. Th that's been the strategy. And, and so that strategy now is going to get tested. <laughs> okay. We won't have to wait too long to find out. Sonal Verma is also joining in. Sonal, thanks for waiting by. I think the big engine of growth is uh, CAPEX and the amount that the government would invest in terms of infrastructure. The expectation, of course, is that there would be a 15% hike this time around. But what's your own best guess? And do you think the government can cough up more in terms of CAPEX this time? Yeah, hi, morning. So, I mean, our assumption is the government will continue on the path of uh, pushing public capex. Uh, while the economic survey talked about uh, incipient signs of private capex picking up, uh, our own view is, given the global slowdown and the broader uncertainty, it's quite unlikely that we will see a sustained turn in private capex cycle in the next one year. So, I think it's quite important, uh, therefore, uh, for public capex to continue to be front-loaded uh, as the gap uh, on growth uh, could be a lot more than what the uh, economic survey is currently estimating. Uh, net net, we think uh, capex uh, will continue to be pushed. Uh, on aggregate, we're looking at capital expenditure uh, being stepped up by about 20% year over year. Uh, so uh, from about 7.4 trillion INR in FI23 to about 9 trillion INR in FI24. Uh, uh, now, the second question in terms of uh, whether the government will able, be able to actually walk uh, these uh, numbers, uh, I think that's going to be a bit more challenging. Uh, as Jangir was mentioning, in the last couple of years, uh, the assumptions around tax revenues uh, have been more conservative. Uh, this time around, uh, it looks like it could actually be on the other side. Uh, if the underlying assumption is real growth of 6.5% and nominal growth of 11%. Uh, we think the risk is clearly towards disappointment. I mean, our own assumptions for real growth is around 5.1% uh, and nominal GDP growth of 85 to 9%. So uh, we could end up seeing more uh, rosy assumptions around uh, nominal growth and revenues this time around, uh, which could uh, mean a bigger trade-off uh, on how much capex the government can do this year. Right. You know, many uh, people told us under 6% real GDP. 
but Sonal's was I mean, the you lowest were at 5.1. Yeah. So when I took the average, I actually took out the outlier. Even then, I got an average of 5.9. Uh, but so much of it is dependent on what happens to the uh, globe, right? Uh, yeah, uh, and I want to just, uh, Sonal and Jangir, good morning. Uh, Jangir, uh, and we've discussed this before as well. Uh, what happens to the US, what happens to the globe will have an outsized impact on, I mean, what we're able to do here. Uh, but that is also such a fast-moving picture, or maybe it's not fast-moving. Uh, we're reporting on it daily, so it looks fast-moving. Uh, what is your sense now? Are things looking a little better, especially in the U.S.? You know, we have data overnight which shows uh, wage inflation is starting to come under control. Uh, it's basically looking a bit of a, a kind of risk-on environment. Financial conditions are looking a little easier. And, of course, we go into the Fed later today. But uh, from a slightly next couple of months perspective, are you a little more sanguine about uh, the U.S. and growth there? Your sense? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think what has happened over the last two months has been quite dramatic. Uh, I think the fears that people had that, you know, U.S. would fall into a recession in the first half of 23, that's quite faded away. And even if there are recession risks down in the fourth quarter and the first of, of 23 and the first quarter of 24, these are much more modest numbers people are talking about. So I think, broadly speaking, this uh, scenario of, of, of uh, soft landing has probably got higher probability over the last two months than before. But I think more than that, I would say that, you know, the European recession now has been pushed back because natural gas prices have come down. And I think the biggest change has been this massive reopening that's happened in China, which is, you know, everywhere, everything, all at once reopening, which was not in anyone's, anyone's uh, uh, radar. It was supposed to be a nice calibrated reopening. So I think the combination of all three of them and the fact that you now have a dollar that has actually peaked and is weakening, I think provides a significant amount of headwind yeah. to emerging market assets. Uh, but I would, I would sort of warn that looking at that and saying that that is going to continue for the rest of the year would be something that one shouldn't, assumption one shouldn't make. And I think as far as India is concerned, I mean, I find that, you know, I, I agree with, you know, uh, Sonal, you know, we have also in the five handle growth in mm. FY24. It is extremely hard uh, to look at growth uh, going beyond that. I mean, think about, let I me mean, just think about the arithmetic. Don't forget about the economics of it. Mm. This government or the CSO has 7% annual growth rate for FY23. Mm. We had for one, first quarter of 13.5, second quarter 6.3, which means that the government itself is telling you that in the second half of this fiscal year, growth is going to be around four and a half. Yeah. So the run rate, and this is not, not I mean, this is just, tyranny of arithmetic mm. has nothing to do with economics, right? So if you're going to talk about six and a half, seven percent growth rate in FI24, you need India's growth rate to jump from a run rate of about four, four and a half percent to six and a half, seven percent for next four, for four straight quarters. <laughs> Jagi, that's also the tyranny of arithmetic. That's also the tyranny of arithmetic. That is also the you know, this four I, and a half agree, percent means... is because last year, same time, there was a tremendous uh, growth in India because we were coming out of the Delta and there was a lot of consumption. So this four and a half is a base effect as well. Absolutely. But, you be, but if you're going to tell me that growth is going to be 7% and it's going to jump from the run rate of 4%, then you re really need some drivers no, around that, you. No, seven, if the no, global economy no, was... So let's be fair to them. They, they have not up. said 7. They have not said 7. They said everyone is saying 6. 6 and, and, half. Six and a half. 6 and a half. Six and a half, six. Six is a 200 basis points increase in the growth rate. No, I mean, oh, it's 150 basis, basis, basis in the we are at four rate. and a half. Okay, uh, let me get uh, Sonal in on this. Uh, exactly the points that, ja, you know, Prashant asked Jahangir. The world is sl looking slightly clement now. You know, people are talking more about a soft landing than a hard landing, and there is the China reopening. So, uh, Sonal, you know, can, can we do better in terms of growth? Our global impulse is not going to be that big a headwind. Other things do look better compared to what one had expected a couple of months back, but I would say we are not out of the woods yet. Um, the 
monetary policy cycles work, work with uh, long lags, uh, and we've seen sort of synchronized aggressive tightening only in the last uh, nine months or so. Uh, so the full impact of that on labor markets and consumption, I think, is yet to be seen globally. Uh, so in our baseline, uh, we are still expecting a recession uh, both in U.S. and uh, Europe, although, uh, you know, less uh, than what we had anticipated a couple of months back. Now, China reopening, of course, has been faster than expected. I think the question is to what extent there will be spillovers from there. Now, the services side of uh, consumption within China, outbound tourism from China uh, is definitely going to pick up. Uh, but the extent of uh, pent-up uh, demand uh, because of household savings, uh, the extent of policy stimulus that will truly turn around the property market cycle given unemployment, particularly youth unemployment, is quite high, uh, does suggest that the spillover on non-services consumption and on the property market uh, could be slightly lesser than uh, what one is expecting. So, I mean, we have raised our 2023 growth projection for China to about uh, 5.3 from 4.8, uh, but also lowered uh, 2024 to around uh, 4.5 percent. So, uh, it's uh, better, but uh, not uh, great in terms of sort of China bailing out the uh, world. Now, coming back to India, Lata, I think uh, you know I agree on the 4 percent being uh, because of high base from last year. Uh, but if you look at the July, September quarter GDP, and even the quarter before that, on a quarter on quarter annualized basis, uh, the run rate is actually closer to five and a half percent. So to assume that for the full year FI24, we'll have a growth of six and a half percent, we are saying that not only will these spillovers from global slowdown be less, there's going to be an acceleration in the private capex cycle, acceleration in uh, you know public capex cycle, acceleration in private uh, consumption side, which uh, we have not seen uh, any of those effects. Uh, we have just seen the export slowdown. Uh, historically, the export slowdown spills into private investment slowing down that is yet to actually materialize. And even in India, the effective rates have gone from 335 to six quarter now. Yeah. The impact of that is yet to be seen. So I do not see how growth can be anything uh, in a six handle. All right, we take your point. Uh, that's extremely cogently argued. Uh, so let's see what they assume. Let's see whether they assume an 11, 12 percent uh, uh, tax growth based on an 11% GDP, then perhaps there will be some bit of uh, disbelief, uh, at least among the bond dealers. Thank you very much, Jahangir and Sunil, uh, for joining us. We will touch base after we get the real numbers, of course. Well, just a word on now from the economy.